administration, faculty, staff, parents, friends, alumni, and graduates. Here we stand today at the end of a four-year journey, a journey we began in 2009 as mere freshmen, wide-eyed and overeager, waiting to be shaped by this life-defining transition to adulthood called high school. I remember seeing the seniors in their practically godlike status and being fascinated by the incredulous realization that I would know my classmates, many of whom I'd known since elementary school, when they would be adults. So what really went on in this magical process that seemed to turn gawky, scrawny freshmen into bearded, deep-voiced men and mature, sophisticated senior women? Sacred Heart happened, a time when we all simultaneously changed and were changed, growing in every way and learning lessons within and without the classroom. If someone were to ask me, however, what was that pivotal moment that marked my experience at Sacred Heart, I honestly don't think I'd be able to answer. For me, and I'm sure many of my classmates, there is no single defining moment that characterizes my entire high school experience. Rather, it's often the mundane shared memories that serve as puzzle pieces to, to create the bigger picture. To quote John Lennon, life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. And as we lived out the everyday experiences without a second thought, we suddenly realized that high school had happened, that we were graduating. Obviously, we will all remember some of the fun, crazy standout moments, winning Spirit Week, modeling in the fashion show, beating Menlo twice in Belva Bowl, capture the flag, rock and jock festivities, the list goes on and on. I think that what makes our class unique has brought, and has brought us all together is all the seemingly insignificant things. And it's these things that make me think about how glad I am to be in the class of 2013, that make me see the appreciation everyone has for their classmates. Like hearing a crow from across campus and not being able to tell if it's Adrian Prophet or an actual crow. <laughs> Griffin Lee dancing on top of tables. Adam Marquardt yelling out Schley across the cafeteria. Emma Eisenberg singing to herself during passing periods. Lizzie Johnson's daily fashion ensembles. Shared hatred of Epicurean's lack of cups. These are the moments often overlooked, yet they share an equally important place in my heart as I reflect on my journey through high school. Throughout our time at Sacred Heart, I truly feel that we have become better people. Somewhere along the way between freshman and senior year, as the five goals of Sacred Heart were hammered into us, we actually began to realize these goals and embody a sphere that cannot explicitly be taught. I've seen all of my classmates grow both spiritually and intellectually, cultivating and sharing their passions for service, for lending a helping hand, for living up to the five goals of the Sacred Heart, and then spreading these ideas above and beyond the hallways of our high school into the greater community. As trite as this may sound coming from the valedictorian, Sacred Heart has also inspired a genuine desire for learning that goes beyond the letter grade and the GPA boost. Students here love to learn. Just look at Matt Denton, who took a computer science course independently at MIT, or Marie Pluvinage, who works in the stem cell lab at Stanford. And though Sacred Heart commits its students to community service, many exceed the school's requirements purely for the sake of doing good. I know that every single member of the class of 2013 embodies goal four, the building of community is a Christian value. We seniors are our own community, bonding together through Kairos, lunchtime wiffle ball, Spirit Week Harlem shakes, and impromptu field trips to Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Goal five, however, is a bit more obscure. Personal growth in an atmosphere of wise freedom is what develops in us each year and is the goal we ultimately take with us as we go off to college and get ready to face the proverbial real world. This is the goal that guides us to live out the values of Sacred Heart when there's no one telling us to. The goal that inspires us to make good decisions and, more importantly, to be good people when the choice is ours and ours alone, away from the comfortable bubble of Atherton. And I think, Sacred Heart, that you have indeed readied us to enter the, enter the world as adults, in spite of the fact that, at 18, we really are just overgrown kids. So, I would like to say thank you. Thank you to the school for providing all of us with a truly one-of-a-kind education that never failed to exceed expectations. Thank you to all the teachers, first of all, for even having to deal with high schoolers, <laughs> for putting in your time and effort for each student and genuinely caring and for inspiring us to seek knowledge outside the classroom. 
Thank you to all the parents and families for being our rock, our ultimate support system throughout all the ups and downs of high school, and for being there when we needed you and knowing exactly when we didn't. Lastly, thank you to all my classmates, not to get too emotional or anything, but just for being yourselves. An amazing, talented, funny, weird, brilliant bunch of kids who helped make my Sacred Heart experience and all of your classmates' experiences as well. It's been an unforgettable four years full of countless crazy, one-of-a-kind moments that I know we will all look back on with a smile. In closing, I wish the class of 2013 the best as we go on to bigger things and prepare ourselves to be shaped by a whole new set of experiences. Our journey at Sacred Heart, for some four years, for, for others 14, may be coming to a close, but a new one has already begun.